Hello, I'm Carrie. Today we'll be talking about Harkin's album. I'm now going to connect with her live. <sighs> Request, great. Where is she? Katie? <laughs> oh no. Anyone who can watch, Katie. She's a millennial, she should be figuring this out. Hackathon and three others sent a request. Harkathon, here we go. Katie. Hi. Hi. Look, Cheers, mate. Look at this. I made tea. I made tea so that we could have this conversation. Amazing. What kind of tea? You do tips, mate. It's all right. What? It's all right. Oh my god. It's not Yorkshire gold, but you know, you make do in quarantine. I don't think that you left Yorkshire gold at my house. Or mm. you I don't think I would have left it behind. To be fair. All right. Um, I'm also eating homemade banana bread. That's amazing. That is, if I may say, out, out of character. It's shocking. <laughs> it's quite shocking. <laughs> okay, well, we're here to talk about this record. Congratulations. Thank you, mate. Uh, how are you feeling? And why don't you tell everyone where you are right now? Um, well, I'm in Yorkshire and I kind of feel like I've been living in a space station for a few weeks and now the record, the gold record that I sent out from the space station has made it to other life forms. So it's been a, it's been an overwhelming day. Did you ever think, I'm not going to put the record out now, was there ever <laughs> thought I'm going to wait? Or did it just, what were, what were your feelings leading up to it once you realized it would be coming out in a different environment than we imagined? I think, I mean, the fact that, that we have hand mirror as well gave us like the ultimate control over that decision, but I didn't want to wait. I felt like, like the last thing I should be doing is like cutting off a chain of communication with people right now. That's what felt right to me. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any... Um, plans what are you doing today besides this <laughs> um well I'm wearing my quarantine outfit because this chair this reminds me of a chair I used to have so I wore it but I'm going with like just really leaning into the the like what's that thing called where you fold the paper over and then you draw something and then you fold it over again exquisite corpse of like <laughs> quarantine outfit so I've got like shorts on my slippers my shirt, my peaks hat. Um, oh, I should go grab my Harkin hat. Sell the product, Carrie, sell the product. Um, <laughs> but no, today's been lovely. It's been um, nice to see all the packages arriving at people's houses. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk about how long did you work on this record? I worked on this record for probably five years like all in I started writing it in um Ashley's house my friend Ashley Connor who took the cover photo I went to go and visit her in New York one January um and then she got a job on a movie because she's very clever and um this is weird this is so strange and weird to be on the internet I'm just gonna say Are you I haven't done Instagram live before so there's lots of comments down there. I look forward to getting my vinyl. That's in okay. I also heard that the vinyl sold out in the UK today. So thank you for everybody that, that yeah, we're going to try and figure out a way to get more. But obviously, um, the movement of goods right now is tricky. Um, but uh, yeah, I started writing the record in Ashley's house because I went to visit her. She got a job. I still came and then went to like occupy her life. And I thought I was going to like be a cool New Yorker and like roam the streets and then there was a like a polar vortex so I got trapped in her apartment um for 10 days and started writing so it's kind of neat that she ended up taking the picture but who else would it be that's true 
And where, what about the, uh, the title? How long have you had the title? I had another title. I don't well, know if I told you. Mm. Mm. You don't want to say mm. it? Was I don't it, know. Was it full length, full length body mirror? <laughs> I had another title, uh, but when we got, when we made the artwork, um, like we all approved it, everybody that I'd sent it to, and it didn't have the title on the front and nobody noticed. So I felt like that's not what this album is called because I, I didn't notice, Kate didn't notice, no one noticed. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to jump in. We got some questions in advance from our, from our viewers. Oh, hi. Hang on. We've got Glenn from the Harkin Band who is on the tour with us. Hi, Glenn. Who else we got? And, and Toko. Toko is there too. Hi, Toko. Toko. This is nice. Hi, this we can nice. say one. Michael James Grant. Buy her candy, Rock Nilla. Hi, hi. I'm having fun now. I'm not. Um, it's not weird anymore. It's not. It's less weird. Okay. <laughs> Our first question is from Corin Tucker in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. she asks, "What? This is a big question. What is the most important part of being an artist for you? Writing, performing, recording." Um. What was the last part? Writing, performing, recording. Mm, I, the most important part of being an artist. This, um, this stuff, right? This kind of, hi, Joseph Keckler. <laughs> hi, Joseph Keckler. Um, everyone should be tuning in to Joseph Keckler's live performances as well. Um, I think it's a kind of introvert, extrovert balance that has um, functioned for me. Like the introvert part of being an artist is like, the writing and then the extrovert is the touring and I feel like if I've tended the gardens um unequally then stuff feels feels bad so I think it's uh they're intrinsically linked Karen Tucker of Portland Oregon and by the way people are probably wondering why isn't Corin here well she texted both of us two days ago and said mm -hmm. had a scheduling conflict mm -hmm. she's, nope. a bit, she's in demand She's in demand right now. We miss Corin, but uh, she did actually question. She does, she does have a job um, that she's doing today. Yeah. Hi, Corin. Who is Corin Tucker of Portland, Oregon? Someone asked. We don't know. Um, Patrick Hart. Great question, then. Yeah. Patrick Hart, your, your brother. My brother. Hello, Patrick Harkin. Um, he asked. You travel so much for your job. What's the weirdest or most surreal life on the road experience? Um, we had something that happened in Brussels when we were on tour. Like this most recent tour that we were on. <laughs> me? And that, and you and me in that restaurant. You mean that, to remember this. that lady that freaked out? Yes. Yes. So quite recently, we were, it was like being in a play somehow we we're in a all the band were there and we were having dinner before the show and this family next to us started having like a real heated family dispute um and there was sort of two acts to the play at first she stormed out and threw all the coats on the floor threw my coat on the floor i had nothing to do with it and then she came back in and then threw a glass at someone and it shattered and it nearly hit was it you was it karen who nearly got last? It was, I thought it, it wasn't me. It, it might have been Angie. It might have been Angie. Yeah, because she was. Someone on this uh, commented that they were that person. Well. Really? We have a lot of questions, if so, because we think it, it was about vast inheritance is what we were projecting onto it. So That was one of the that was a very surreal experience because it felt like we were watching like this little play in miniature. I mean, it was, it had all the drama. Yeah. And um, it was like a foreign film that you didn't quite understand. Like bits and pieces, but. Corin literally just commented, Corin. Where? You're watching? She just commented. She said Brussels. <laughs> chilling out, watching us. Okay. Next question. He's just trolling us. It's great. Corin loves to troll people. <laughs> people that know about her. Okay. Here's a good question. It's one I had as well. It's just from Carl, Cincinnati. 
being front and center for Harkin and Skylarkin requires different skills from being a, a hired hand, which is not what I would call you. <laughs> I do jobs around your house and like yeah. laundry and stuff. Um, I, I call you my house boy, but he's calling you a hired hand. Um, okay. And uh, well, from being, you know, but what is he saying? It's, it's different from playing along with us or Courtney or Kurt. So, um, what is the difference and what do you hope, I guess, my follow-up question is, is there a trepidation? Like, do you worry as you put this out? Like, or what are the feelings? Like, what are you trying to convey when you are sort of presenting yourself as, like, this is what I do. You're used to seeing me in this uh, augmentative world. Mm -hmm. so what is the difference, Katie? The difference between all those things. Well, I think that, Oh, I had an idea and then I forgot it. The difference between that is whenever you start a band or a project as an artist, it can be quite isolating because you end up sealing in this unit once you find the right collaborators and the right people. And then you travel with the same unit, with the same family, potentially for the rest of your life. But being able to work with so many different people has like let me be a little interloper into lots of different worlds and it has just been um just the like I I could never have learned so many things you know from just plugging away my own and I'm just really grateful for it okay what about spring what are you planning on like how are you <clears throat> I know you like playing live when mm. you played some people want this banana bread recipe probably not I want it actually. You do? Okay, I'll, I'll post it at the end. Um, how does it feel to not be able to play live right now? Like, where are you sort of finding ways to feel creative? And how do you want to, like, now that you're unable to bring this record into the world in a live setting, once it's out, obviously, you did some touring before it came out. Mm -hmm. Like, how does that make you think about live performance? Like, the, the lack of, like, sometimes we don't, it's so cliche, but like, we don't really realize the importance of something until all of a sudden this were prohibited. So like, what are you missing right now from, from that live connection in really record? I, I mean, I miss my friends. I miss, um, I mean, I think the whole reason I wanted to be in bands is because I crave that kind of connection, you know, growing up and feeling like an outsider and feeling lonely. And, you know, that part of it is tough, but also, it's difficult to perform to a screen, you know, it's difficult to perform to a, a blank screen. And I haven't, I haven't done a, and I'm in awe of people that can, um, I haven't done a live performance like that yet. And I'll, I will think I'll figure out a way that I feel, I feel comfortable doing it. Um, but it's, it's certainly difficult because there's so many, you know, supporting artists is about supporting the places that allow us to, survive and you know it doesn't matter if everybody is somehow inspired in quarantine if there's no venues left for us to play and after it's over um then that's really worrying so i would encourage people to support their local independent venues as well um we're getting like my press answer for my friend carrie <laughs> <laughs> um now a lot of people are starting to ask about cricket um one thing why don't you um, let people know your thoughts on cricket? Well, cricket, by the way, is my dog. You got cricket is cricket was one of well when I first came to Portland. Cricket was was one of my only friends in Portland. It being you guys and her, um, so we go a long way back. And um, is she there? I mean, can I see her? Does she ask about me? Here's the thing about Cricket. She hates when I do, when I'm like talking like this, mm -hmm. she finds it very unnerving because it, yeah. she knows something weird's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she tackled me in your house in the middle of the night once when I came to stay at your house after a show and I was trying to creep in really quietly and uh, she fully like body tackled me to the ground because um, I wasn't paying her enough attention. So With she's like, with love yeah though. yeah oh yeah yeah with love it was very reciprocal um where did the name wait i want to... where did the username hackathon from it's my it's me if i was a marathon hello from brazil 
Um, how's the banana bread? <laughs> Where's trolling Tucker? Where is she? Corin literally trolled. <laughs> <laughs> Put the hugging hat on cricket. Um, I had somebody um, ask about the best hand washing song on the record. And at the end of New France, there's like a drone section that's about 30 seconds long. So if you put that on, that's about enough time for the hand washing. Um, lots of cricket love. How are you? I'm are you good. Great? This is not about me. Here, let's go. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> I know. Corin. Corin just said I'm here in the comments again. She's back. She's back. Join Corin. in. Is that Corin. possible? I mean, this is my. Corin. <laughs> okay, someone asked how you met us. <clears throat> also, someone asked, gravy or curry sauce? Both. You don't have to choose. I would have, mm, actually, I would have fish and chips. This is a very important question. Fish and chips with curry sauce and mushy peas and mayonnaise and ketchup or chips and gravy it would be chips cheese and gravy but i can't eat the cheese um very important question thank you for asking all right mm -hmm. even cooking also <laughs> corin how angry are we getting right now on a scale of one to ten with corin i'm at a two i'm You're at a, <laughs> I'm a high two is, at wait is two the high where's the scale is one the highest oh no, one is the lowest what is the lowest i can never be angry at her it's so corin to be in the comments Ugh. it's subtle you know okay then... favorite one-liners what everyone's favorite food baby sam and ben goldfarb okay what chip shop or curry shop chip chop or chinese curry um it's well, in the context of fish and chips, chip shop. Um, what's my favorite SK record? Yeah, um, should be live with us. I'm trying to think what's my favorite one to play live. Just so many of the new songs are so fun to play live. Um, yeah. What, what were you listening? Okay, you made this out for five years. So were there things that you were listening to? Like sometimes when I, when, when we start music stuff, like Corn and I will send each other songs, you know? Yeah. Okay, listen to this mm -hmm. that song or listen to this Peter Gabriel song. I mean, it, it can be very- Interesting. Interesting and-, and <laughs> Yeah. Cause it's not always like, you know, a one-to-one -one thing. You're just, you're, mm -hmm. you want them to hear something in the song that, you know, Anyway, yeah. can you, and so over the five years, can you think of a few artists or yeah. where you thought, oh my I, God. I remember going into the studio uh, with Jen and Stella who played drums and bass on the record and talking to them about the meters, just thinking of like the best possible, like tight live band feeling. Um, so yeah, definitely listening to a lot of the meters, definitely listening to a lot of like David Axelrod in terms of, arrangements and stuff like that and on, honestly a lot of Bill Withers like I just that was so heartbreaking and I I did post this but I did DM like a bot that I think is a fake Bill Withers Instagram account because like somebody tagged him in a picture and I was like if there's any way in hell this is actually Bill Withers I'm gonna send him a heartfelt DM um, because he had such a range as a songwriter like there's almost like any occasion in your life that you could find a Bill Withers song that would fit it. And I, when I was thinking about like, approaching a record as a songwriter rather than like collecting sounds, it was like to, to be able to make him on it because I didn't want to be to like reflect a person as a whole rather than just like, yeah, this is my one trick pony record, you know? Yeah, and I guess that's the nice thing about recording over. But it was just between tours and other things in my life that went on. And I was really conscious of like not tinkering it with, with it like on my laptop in between because I wanted it to like stay in the studio and it to be totally separate from 
my life which was predominantly being on tour rather than like going insane in my bunk like pulling a song apart and making myself hate it you know and some people are asking Stella from War Paint yes it is that Stella mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah yeah and Jen okay. from, Jen from Y Oak and yeah. are you gonna sneeze I'm I bet <laughs> my talented friend so I'm just gonna burp over the shout out um how do you guys like your coffee I like my tea as my nan would say I'm teetotal coffee hmm? uh, maybe doesn't drink coffee guys no coffee. when I grow up I'll get a taste for it when she turns 21 a lot of people are asking about fetch the bolt cutters do you see this lots of yeah yeah love it I, I I feel like my emotional bandwidth right now in general for life is like quite limited. So I've only listened to two songs because I haven't, I've like listened to one song and that took, that like took a day out for me. And then like a few days later, I listened to another song. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. But I equally, I haven't listened to the whole thing because I think with some records, like I just want to be able to set it to one side and give it the attention that I want. And, yeah, my, my attention span has been pretty shredded at the moment. Yeah, I kind of had the same experience where um, the night it was released, I listened to it and the emotional scope of that record is almost broader than what I can sort of comprehend right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it's, it's scary to sort of let yourself like wander to some of those places that she's going in, in such a like profound artistic way that I also feel like I need parameters. And she's, mm. the thing about Fiona is it's expansive music, you know? Yeah. So that I, in some ways I need things that are more familiar to me. Um, mm. And I will say your album is something I think because I had listened to it before this, mm -hmm world there there I find comfort in it you know that I, I can put on the album or now I have it digitally because mm -hmm. I can it. but like before that like I could listen to it and there's something reassuring about this this sense of continuity between what came before what's happening now and what will come again yeah um, so it's I'm glad to have been able to take your record in before this moment which is one of you know more I think yeah thanks mate that's really lovely to hear yeah and, we, and for me I'm just so grateful that we got to do that tour together where I opened for you guys as well because like it I mean I I cried when I came off stage in Manchester and you know that I did because it meant so much to me and um oh no <laughs> oh no are you gonna cry it's okay I could cry you know I could cry because I'm just so grateful that we got to do that tour because it means the world to me this is um most memorable green room. <laughs> I'll change the subject before I start crying on the live feed. Um, because it does mean the world to me that we got to do that. And hi, Lena from my band. Um, because that's the, you know, that's the whole point of it is to, well, it was the whole point of it to get together, to be together in a room. And it's taking on, yeah, lots of new meanings now that we can't do that for now. Yeah, I mean... It is amazing. And when we came home from that tour, for people who don't know, Slater Kinney and <clears throat> Katie um, played twice every night, once with her own band and then with Slater Kinney. And somehow we, we finished that tour. We were probably one of the last groups to finish a full yeah. before um, the coronavirus sort of became the pandemic that we're all living in. And we look back on that in, in, with fondness like I think and there's a sort of surreality to it yeah and I I, I went straight on to a tour with uh, with Torres Mackenzie and her band and we we were on tour when the pandemic was announced and um you know like I know the show we played in Denmark was the last one at that venue the show that we played in Berlin was the last one at that venue and um yeah it felt very strange to be on a tour that's that's closing things out um but it's just yeah, it's certainly given me the appetite for 
try and think of ways that we can stay connected in this, you know. I mean, I'd be live, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I went from being like a nervous wreck to just like being very overwhelmed by uh, how how nice it is to be back in touch with everybody. Wait, back in touch what? Like, I think my experience of li of like just live streaming, um, I find it I find it very touching in a way that is surprising to me. Yeah, I, I'm i more, well, I think because basically my entire life is live streaming now, not <laughs> like connect with people is, yeah. I, I used to um, feel like the screen as a, me a form of like mediation so much more than I do now. Yeah. Um, oh, hi, Abby. Hi, Abby. Abby. And Julie and Corin. How hi, is Corin. <laughs> what is she saying? How has the international Hawkins? Is she out of family? I don't know. I don't know. Hi, Karen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Halloween in New York. That's a good one. Karen, uh, asking questions is easy, is one of the funniest things. <laughs> and also that, also that we also have, um, I, oh, favorite Courtney Barnett song? Mm, anonymous Club. Okay. I like that one. And what about, wait, someone, Corn is a mystery. Hi, guys. There's, we got people from Big Joni. Here. Oh, international hockey in response. Um, well, we'll find out. There's, I think there was someone from Brazil in here. Quarantine, that's very good. Carly Havenick, that's a great pun. Um, quarantine. Corn, have you, Corn, you need to embrace that quarantine. The quarantine. Yeah, that should be a Corn's podcast. Also, quarantine. Uh, I like that bandmates are saying hi to each other. Like the big Joni bandmates are saying hi to each other via. Oh, and Stephanie has an EP out today, so please, you know, go and check that out. I can't wait to to listen to it. Hey, hi, Taryn. Three. Ashley, where do we buy your merch? Where do we buy your merch? You buy it at handmirror.online. Nice is where you buy my merch uh, and there's a yeah independent company called awesome merch who are from leeds who've been really fantastic in helping us stay afloat during all this um yeah there's another karen Edie, what's your sign someone's asking you know what my sign is or what or someone's asking what my sign is uh i'm a double aries so i'm sorry Explain i don't know no, I don't know anything about astrology. You, well, you're I a Libra, right? Libra. That's, uh, I, I don't really know either, but from living in upstate New York for a time, there's like, I've osmosed a certain amount of astrology. Uh, and how, how many people do we know who are otherwise pragmatists, realists, <laughs> Science lovers who also are like insane astrology practitioners and believers. Ast astrology Instagram is going to come for us, Carrie, if we if we get on this road too far. They're going to cancel us. I astrology Instagram. <laughs> um, Born the Scorpio. You know what? Let's just explain, let's explain this through astrology. Okay. The corn's not here. Is because she's. <laughs> and you know what? They're very intense. <laughs> Hang on. Someone just said my daughter is a triple Aries and she's lovely. And someone's asking opinion on Glee. I've never seen Glee, have you? Yeah, there's been a lot of Glee questions. I don't know what the relevance is. I've also not seen Glee. We neither of us have seen Glee. Sorry. Glee. Um, I've, been, I've been catching up on all my British TV while I'm back here. Um, University. <laughs> Challenge and Gogglebox together make the perfect blend of British television. Have you seen either of those shows? What was the first one? University Challenge. No. It's uh, it's amazing. The, the final was last week, though, so I've had to, to go back and catch up. <laughs> people, are, people are saying Corin seems nicer than the Scorpios, I know. I know. <laughs> she really does. Corny, Corny Barnett's a Scorpio. She's lovely. Well, the, what are the problem with Scorpios? 
Yeah, what are the problems with Scorpios? I think, I don't know. They're they're intense. They're fiery. Isn't aren't those good things? Uh, Corin says I'm into Glee. Corin has like <laughs> crossed over. Now Corin's on the Glee tip for. Wait, can you please talk about? Wait, Chelsea, what did you say? Our, our friend, did you see Portrait of a Lady? Corin is a textbook Scorpio. Wow. Oh someone, my God. No, and someone. That, really, think, have you seen Portrait of a Wait Portrait of a Lady on Fire? That that film i haven't and i think it's like a testimony to how hard i've been working in that i didn't see it before lockdown because i was touring so much and working um to get the label ready and it's a it's a regret it's a big regret but i'll well, find a way i know someone just said oh chelsea wants to know what your favorite karaoke song is um, I like Wichita Lineman. I like a croon for a karaoke song. Um, yeah, what about you? I like Tom Petty. I like The Waiting by Tom Petty, and I like uh, Dancing in the Dark. So I gotta say, the last time I did karaoke, I got really, really sick afterwards, so I stopped doing it on tour because of the shared microphones. So Bro, I, think, I, think that, I think the future for karaoke is bleak, you know? <laughs> karaoke unless you bring your own mic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you should call quarantine poor yes I was, anyway we're just reading this i feel like it's it's hard to talk too seriously in this medium is this right i feel i don't know but it, it feels it's just hard to talk in this medium full stop i think like it's well, also, we're, I'm very overstimulated there's lots of things happening you know yeah happening. okay Let's just keep it light for the final finale here. Sure. Um, okay. So what have you been doing to stay sane? I've been walking. I've also been not leaving the house for a couple of days if I don't feel like going outside. That's also fine. I've been um, talking with my friends. I've been indulging myself on British treats that I'd missed while I was in the States. I've drunk nearly three liters of Vinto, if that means anything to anyone out there. Not to um, me. Have you got any idea what Vimto is? Vimto? Vimto. Yeah. No, what's Vimto? Vimto is like a, it's like a cordial squash thing. You don't have them in America. Like you put a little bit in a glass and you fill it up with water, kind of like a syrup. Um, but it's one that's from Manchester and um, yeah, I ordered it online and I didn't realize I'd ordered uh, three liters of it and I've nearly finished it. Um, I made myself a Greg's pasty in the oven. Um, yeah, just uh, playing a lot of uh, FIFA. Um, you know, FIFA. <laughs> FIFA, like FIFA? Yeah, yeah. Soccer? Mm -hmm. Football? Yeah. Yeah, you can play as, as a as a girl now. Could you believe it? It's the uh, future's here. Um, and um, a lot you, of yeah, you can play as rapper now. You know, got the American team in there. Um, Hot Vimto. Hot Vimto is not king. I'm so sorry. Uh, Fizzy Vimto is king if you make it yourself. Like, in a... Yeah, I love that this has gone into Vimto. Um Vim fizzy Vimto on its own, like from the store, is too sweet. But when you make it yourself with fizzy water, that's great. Um, hang on. Uh, you can <laughs> buy Vimto for $20, Carrie, if you want to, in the international analysis. Um, yeah, what about you, mate? What have I been doing? I've been doing, trying to do some writing. It's hard, but I'm mm -hmm. trying. I've been, um, some home improvement projects. Like what? Um, I painted uh, my front porch and front stairs. That's pretty impressive. Um, cooking more than I ever have. Hanging out yeah. with my pup. Have you? Have you? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you what you've cooked, but we've been through that. <laughs> uh, I cook a lot of pasta. Mm -hmm. um, been pasta to brag. Someone has pasta still. What? You stocked up. <laughs> On pasta? Yeah. Pasta. Pasta, sorry. Pasta. 
Buffy thoughts are uh, very pro, very pro. Um, Seth Green, the actor is the first celebrity I ever wrote to as a child and I got a response um, allegedly from him uh, and I wrote it in green ink when I was about 12. Um, so yeah, very pro Buffy. That got a lot of love hearts. There you go. Oh, yeah. there's Angie with a pasta emoji. Hi, Angie. Any good books? You know what? I've been reading the new um, Emily St. James Mandel book. Uh, she wrote Station Eleven. Um, what is her new? One? I have not had. I have not had the the bandwidth for books. Oh, I have to admit. I, I, I'm rewatching. Not even rewatching. The Sopranos. I realized I'd never seen it. I'd only Me seen either. the first season of The Sopranos, and now I'm rewatching the entire thing. I need to, yeah. I, I think I think I'm about ready to go there. I've been watching, also been watching a lot of um, the Great British Cooking Show. What is that? It's the competition with the different regions. You mean the Great British Bake Off? No, not the baking one. The cooking one. Oh, I, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, the, I'm, don't worry. I'll I'll hook you up with all the like deep cut British, uh, very warm hearted competition shows. Um, yeah, talk about pasta, says Ashley. Um, hey, says An Angie. The glass of salt. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, <laughs> Guess what? I did. I did one of the like thing like this um, for uh, a Facebook Live thing, and of course, somebody. It was like me and five of the artists, and of course, somebody that was also on the panel knew Angie because Angie Boylan is like the skeleton key to American music. When we were on tour, there would be 15 people in every city who Angie had like been in a band with or been on tour with, or like somehow knew and loved her like we do. Um, so yeah, shout out to Angie Bo Boylan. Angie Bo <laughs> Boylan hat. Boylan hat. Boylan um, hat. Carrie do a flip. Go on Carrie, do a flip. A what? A flip. It says Carrie do a flip. Vita and Fleabag. Oh, I watched Fleabag, um, the play. Uh, it's in the UK. It's on the Soho Theatre website for a charity donation. You can watch the play now because I know you saw it, but I didn't see it. I see the play. I was lucky enough to see it in New York. Yeah. Um, so that that was really incredible. Um, the cat that I'm currently locked down with was very, very into it, which was great. Great to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she was tr transfixed as we all. Are you, <laughs> Corinne's chiming in? She has a lot of friends. Yeah. She's not going to have a lot of friends after this. Corinne, uh, I've seen Kelly. Now, Corinne has found two friends after this. One. <laughs> I have I have seen Killing Eve. My friend Liz Lawrence had a song in Killing Eve this week, and her album's really great. So that's Liz Lawrence. I would check that out. Um, I did play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 a lot when I was a kid, but I don't have the technology to do so right now. But I would love to be looking for secret tapes. Um, okay. My favorite chord. Also, someone asked, tell us about the... And New Year's Eve show where you wore the pride flag. Remember that? Um, that was in San Francisco. And that was really fun. We played and there was a balloon drop and someone threw a flag on stage. So I wore it. And then Karen like blew the roof off with her. Um, um, oh God, what, what song did we do? The Bowie cover. What song did she do? Did we do Rebel Rebel? Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, Karen, Karen blew the roof off. Um, that was really fun. I I flown over from the UK for that, so I was like, midnight was mid morning for me, so I was like out of my mind. Um, that was a great night. It was a great night. <laughs> it was a good... All right. Well, I guess we can wrap this up. But I really do want to say this medium does not seem super suited to a <laughs> conversation. But this record is amazing. It's a brilliant record made by a brilliant friend of mine who I'm talking to right now. And I'm very proud of her. And the melodies are beautiful. The lyrics are poetic and wonderful. 
and surprising and there's really great riffs on it and great sounds and she's just a master of melody and it will hit you right here in <laughs> where it should and you'll listen to it over and over again um so thank anyway. you carrie thank you my generous friend thanks for uh calling me and connecting me with everybody today um so please support this record support your friends support your your artists um take care of yourselves and yeah. uh Lauren, <laughs> call me yeah <laughs> unless yeah. you're ready. all right thanks for tuning in everyone yeah um, thank you everyone really nice to see you all bye Bye.